I have a steamer that's having a low water fault. All right, so we're gonna start by firing up the unit, and let's see what's going on. So we're gonna start with all our visual checks first. Make sure nothing obvious is happening. It's gonna point us in the right direction. So first thing, are we filling the boiler? Solenoid has power. Sight glass is filling up, as you can see here. And next thing we're gonna check is, so the filling has completed, there's no more power in the solenoid, but we still have our low water light on, which means we cannot turn on our burner here. It's not gonna allow us. All right, so let's pull up a service manual here. So we have a couple hints. Okay, the low water light's on, but the amber light is also on. So the amber light is so that we can fire up the boiler so that we can get the burner going. Okay, so let's go to our sequence for filling. So the fill solenoid opens and fills the boiler. The rising water on the float, it raises the float on the low water cutoff switch, closing it. Okay, once that happens, this low water indicator light should come on. Okay, the water fills to the low probe, shorting it to ground. Okay, and that should also remove the low water light. So we have a double protection here. We have the low water probe that removes our low water light, and then we also have our secondary low water cutoff float switch that is going to potentially remove that light, telling the board that, hey, we have enough water in the boiler here, we can fire up the burner. And then finally we have a third switch which, the, which is the high probe. Okay, and finally we have a third probe which is the high water probe. And its purpose is to tell the solenoid when to close so that we don't keep filling the boiler. So in this case here we know the high probe's working because the solenoid has closed and we're no longer filling the boiler. So that leads me to believe that the issue is going to be either with the low probe or with the secondary low water cutoff. The other all right, and the last hint we had was the amber lights on. So that comes on when either the low probe is shorted to ground through the water circuit or the secondary low water cutoff float switch is closed its contacts. So that's telling me either the low water probe or the secondary low water cutoff. One of the two are working because that amber light is coming on. So let's go investigate further which one of these two switches has failed. Go ahead and test this low water probe. It can be tested very easily. So that red light there is telling me that it is sensing water. So I'm going to pull the wire just to show you. You pull the wire, the red light comes off. All right. So we know our high water level probe is good because our solenoid stopped filling. So the next thing we went and tested is this low water cutoff probe. So very simple test for this one. You saw that red LED on the board. Okay, as soon as I disconnected that wire, the red LED came off. So that tells me this low water cutoff is good. Okay, so now we can move on to testing the secondary low water cutoff switch. All right, so let's go ahead and test the secondary low water cutoff. So what I'm going to do first is test from the secondary low water cutoff power inlet. In this case it's to ground, I should be testing the neutral, but I confirmed the neutral is good. Okay. We have 113 volts, so that's telling me I have power into my secondary low water cutoff float switch. That's good. Now what I'm going to do next is see if there's power going through the switch. Okay. Why I'm doing this live is because if I shut off the unit, it's going to drain all the water out of the tank, so I can't test it. So now I'm testing across. Okay, so zero volts across would indicate a closed switch. Voltage across would indicate an open switch. Let me just get a better camera angle here. My hands are kind of tied up. All right, we're testing across, 112 volts across. This is telling me the float switch is open. All right, so first thing I did was test power into this float switch which we had power there we had 
112 volts so that means this line here is complete all right the next thing I did was I tested from this point to this point on the solenoid okay so what that's going to do is it's going to tell me if this switch is opened or closed if I get zero volts I know we're closed in our case we had 113 volts that means this switch is open so that's telling me the problem's going to be here in this area right here so I put a jumper in here just to jumper out that switch temporarily for testing purposes only all right so fired up the unit so first indication, the red light's on. That means the low water probe is satisfied or it's grounding out. The sight glass is moving up nicely. The next hint here is this low water light. It has come off. That means my high probe is shorted through the water circuit. Low water light has come off now, which is good news. Let's fire up the boiler and let's see what happens. We have flame, so that confirms the secondary low water cutoff is bad and it confirms all my other components are working as they should. Alright, so what I've done here is I've jumpered out this switch. So I've disconnected I've connected a wire from the low water cutoff inlet to this relay coil. Okay, so what that's going to do, it's going to do two things for me. It's going to complete my circuit to my coil. to my relay coil okay and the reason why I'm doing that is I want to make sure there's no other components that have failed I got to order this part this low water cutoff I want to make sure my module my gas valve everything else is working so I'm jumping this out temporarily just for troubleshooting I'm not going to leave this jumpered out until I can come back and change this part alright so I'm just going to hit fast forward here we're going to remove this secondary low water cutoff switch I do have a new one you can see it's scaled up pretty badly um, I did end up homing it out just to see if I could clean it and make it work but uh, that thing's done and then in there you can see the high and low probes okay so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these while I got the chance right now get everything cleaned up the boilers actually in good condition now the new float switch if it comes upside down, it'll not work. There's a normally open and normally closed. So you want to make sure you test that. Make sure it's working as it should. So we're back on. We're filling the boiler. We filled up. The burner is turning on. That's good news. Last thing I'm going to test now is test the pressure we cut off around 9 psi. And let's just go confirm we're getting steam up into our steam cabinet here. And we have tons of steam. We are all good here. Manual. Uh, we used all our visual cues. So in this case, once that low water light was staying on but the boiler stopped filling, we knew right away to go to those low water probes. So in this case, we have two of them. Not all the machines will have the secondary low water cutoff float switch. It's an option. Uh, most, of the, most of the units around here will have them. Okay, so once we figured that out, we're all good. Uh, I just want to point out, if you have a boiler that's scaled up really badly, so it hasn't been descaled in years, do not attempt to descale it. Uh, what happens a lot is the scale is actually holding the boiler kind of together. And if you try to descale it, it will leak. I've had this happen to me once before and I learned my lesson. Uh, and if you actually go in the training for the Cleveland classes with Mr. Frank there, he will mention to you that any boiler that hasn't been descaled and there's thick amount of scale on it, do not even attempt to descale it because the boiler will most likely leak. And lastly, so you saw me bypass that uh, secondary low water cutoff. That was just for troubleshooting purposes. I was just trying to confirm that there were no other issues. Make sure if you're bypassing things just for troubleshooting, it's just for troubleshooting. Do not leave it bypassed. We do not want this unit to drive fire. It can be very dangerous.